What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got an extension to a previous video that I uploaded which was setting up a VC package and getting it to work on your computer and then linking in everything with Visual Studio. So in my previous video I didn't recognize that it was installing the dynamic versions only and not the static libraries and in order to go ahead and link static libraries i.e. when you build your project you don't get a bunch of DLL files next to the exe, they're all built into it then you need to go ahead and install the static versions for each and every library that you're gonna use. So unfortunately, if you've built everything already, they're all dynamic, they're not gonna be static. However, luckily, you won't have to download or install anything new really. If you have VC package installed and you have some packages installed with it, then more than likely you can already go ahead and produce static versions without having to download much more. So this video assumes that you know what was happening in my previous video where I went through installing, setting up and using a VC package. This video, however, is just going to go through getting static libraries to work. In other words, we're going to go ahead and build a couple of new packages. These ones inside of here are all dynamic. And we're going to go ahead and prepare our project for static libraries to be added to it. So basically, I'm going to be building a few libraries that I built in the previous video, this time as static libraries. And then in the second half of this video, I'll show you how to link them to your existing project. Assuming that you followed my previous project and you know what's happening, I'll go ahead and open up a new PowerShell window. Then inside of it, I'll go ahead and enter the familiar dot slash VC package and install space. And here is where we'd enter some package names normally. So say I wanted to install curl, I would go ahead and do curl colon x86 windows and curl colon x64 windows to go ahead and download and build the curl library for both 32 and 64 bit PCs. In order to build it with OpenSSL support, I'd go ahead and add brackets OpenSSL to right after curl as such. However, this is building the dynamic versions of these libraries. The way that we get them to be static is to simply add onto the end of Windows over here a hyphen static as such. So it'll read the name of the project colon x86 or 64 hyphen Windows hyphen followed by static. And then here again, x64 Windows static. This time when I hit enter, it'll go ahead and it'll tell us some information here. I just simply hit control C to cancel it. But basically, you can see it's gonna go ahead and build these ones as 64 Windows Static and 86 Windows Static. And it'll go ahead and build all of these other libraries as static as well, because these are needed for this one up here to be built. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is copy in a couple of names that I'm gonna be building. So basically, I'll be building curl with OpenSSL 6432 as static. Then on top of that, I'll be building a JSON interaction library and I'll be building Poco as well. So as you can see, this line gets a little bit complicated after a while, but it's just the same simple format. We have one space, another one, space, another one, another one, and then two more at the end over here. The only thing that's different between this video and the last one is that we added static to the very end of it. Now, of course, when we hit enter, this will go ahead and tell us what it's building and it'll start building these things right away. And I'll just wait for one of them to be built. And there we go. Now it's built OpenSSL Windows 64-bit static. If we have a look inside of the folder over here, head into the installed section, we see a new x64 Windows static. And when we're done, we'll also see x86 Windows static. Opening it up, heading into libraries, you'll see the libraries here are a lot bigger than in the other one. So having a look at libcrypto.lib inside of Windows static, and if we simply take out static up here and look inside of the normal one, look for libcrypto, you can see it's a ton smaller. This one is the static library and this is the dynamic one. Why is it so much smaller? Well, it's because it includes a DLL file that you'll be taking with you wherever you build the program. So 19.1 megabytes instead of almost one. But besides that, you probably know what the difference is if you know the difference between building static and dynamic libraries. You'll also notice a lack of a bin folder, and that's because there are no binaries. If we head back to the Windows one, you can see bin up here with a bunch of DLLs and PDB files for debugging. But you can see it's missing in the static one. So either way, now that this is building, I'll simply let this run through to completion. I'll go ahead and do some other things while I wait for all of these packages to download if they're missing. Otherwise, just go ahead and build. And I think on the end of this, I'll actually cancel it and I'll add boost to this as well, just in case I'll be using that later. So boost x64 windows static and boost x86 windows static. And you can see there's a ton of new packages that'll be created. 
There we go. I'll let this run through to completion. Right, so I ran into an error for some reason. I'll simply just try rerunning it and seeing if something changed. But it seems to be running just fine, at least through the other packages. Hopefully when it runs into that one, we'll be able to come back to it later. Hmm, and it seemed to fail again. Okay, well I'll get rid of Paco for now and we'll come back to that just a bit later. So I'll take that out of the queue and I'll just finish off building the rest of these packages in the meanwhile. Right, so now that that's complete and we've gone ahead and built most of these, I'm going to see if I can find out what was wrong with building Paco. Right then, while well, that one seemed to build fine, I'll go ahead and try the 64-bit one now. And that one seems to be failing. So I'll go ahead and open up the log over here and I'll see what's happening. Alright, so it seems to be an issue with expat core, so I'll go ahead and copy it from over here. And see if I can VC package remove. I'll paste this one in and make it 64. Then after that's uninstalled, I'll try and do the 64-bit Paco installation again and see if that works a bit better. So it's going to go ahead and try to build expat core 64-bit and then it'll retry. And there we go, that seemed to work much better this time. How exactly did I get there? Well, I went ahead and opened up the log file over here, scrolled down to the bottom to see what might be happening, and I saw this error over here saying, could not expat missing expat library, expat include directory. So I simply took this, googled for it, and landed up on this question over here. Scrolling down to the bottom, requires expat library and headers. Either way, I went ahead and I removed expat, as you saw earlier, and it says that the files weren't found, so I assume cancelling one of my previous builds caused this issue to happen, but simply uninstalling it and reinstalling it seemed to have fixed it. Either way, I'm going to go back to my huge long instruction over here, try run it again and see if I missed anything. And everything's installed with all of the requirements, so things seem to be good. So now I'll close out of VC package over here, and assuming that this is integrated properly with a project or with your entire system, then we can continue with the next few steps. And there we go, I've made a new project on my desktop. I'll go ahead and try to include something. So I'll go ahead and include curl. As such, I'll go ahead and use curl down here so that the project is built with the DLL as such. And there we go. Looking inside of the project folder, in the export directory, you can see I have libcrypto, libcurl, libssl, and zlib files over here, as well as my main exe. These iobjects and pdb files can be deleted. This is what you'd have to distribute if you share your project with dynamic libraries. So let's go ahead and make this a static project. First of all, I'll go to the release folder and I'll clear it out completely. Then I'll go back a folder and open up this project file over here. Remember, this is the solution. This over here is the project file .vcxproj. Then I'll open this up with something like Notepad++ or Visual Studio Code. Then once you've opened it in a text editor, you can head across to the link in the description down below, which will take you to this page on GitHub over here, which is integration.md inside of docs users in the VC package GitHub page. Then scrolling down to the bottom over here, we have this over here with MS build, and we can go ahead and set these to the static releases that we just made. Basically, we'll be looking for this globals property group. So I'll copy this, or I'll simply copy globals, head back to my text editor, paste it in, and we'll find property group label globals. Then inside of here, if these two don't exist already, I'll go ahead and copy and paste them in anywhere between this opening and closing property group bracket. As such, I'll put it properly tab indented, where we have platform equals 132, x86 windows static, and 64 windows static over here. Then once you've edited this file over here, we'll have to head back to the main project and close Visual Studio completely. Then we can go ahead and save what we edited here and open up the project once again. And now you won't notice a difference. However, if we open up the build folder, go back a folder, release, inside of here are where the files will drop when we build the project. So I'll go ahead and tell the project to build. It'll take a little bit longer and we should have an exe, though something failed over here. And after attempting to build it, we have a ton of errors. Link 2001, unresolved external symbol error, and we have link 1120, 64 unresolved externals. What we'll do is close out of our project and we'll have a look inside of the folder. We'll go back to where our project actually is, and opening up the release folder, we have this over here, which is a debug and a bunch of temporary files. What I'm gonna do is select both debug and release, delete them both, so our project is blank as such. Then I'll reopen the solution, reopen the release folder, and I'll try building it again. Now that we've cleared the cache, things should work a lot better. 
Right, and there we go, I fixed it, things are working properly. It built one single EXE here, that is 2.3 megs big, as well as these for debugging, but you won't need to share these. Basically, I got rid of those extra DLs that were here, and it's all built into one EXE. Of course, it doesn't do anything, it just opens and closes straight away, but either way, the project is working as expected. What exactly happened with those errors over there was partly because those leftover files, but also mainly because in order to statically link curl itself, I have to go into properties of my project, head across to C++, code generation, and set the runtime library to multi-threaded or multi-threaded debug instead of DLL and DLL debug. And down here in the linker section, I had to go ahead and add a couple of things to the list over here wldap32.lib, crypt32, as well as ws232.lib. Either ways, those are basically what I needed to add just for the curl library itself. And if you want to build it any other way, like in one of my previous videos, I think I went through this, I completely forgot about linking those there, but I found it by going through a couple of posts, including this one over here, which was the exact issue I was having. I mentioned just forgetting to link these, and that's exactly what I had to do. So either way, that has been how to build and use static libraries with VC package. Uh, sorry about that last little bit, but that was a little issue on my part. It should work for you. Just make sure that if you are statically linking things, keep in mind that your project may need little things like that to be added, though you should find information like that on the pages of those projects giving you issues. Either ways, that's about it. Thank you for watching. My name has been taken over here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully this video helped you and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.